So I've got a fun little video for you guys today. Today we're going to be doing a Lego Harry Potter set tier list, 2023 sets. Now every single set releasing for the Harry Potter theme in 2023, we know what they look like. They've all been revealed. Three of these sets have not been released yet. That is the Gringotts Bank, the Advent Calendar and the Microscale Hogwarts. But we don't need these sets in hand to recognise how good or bad they are. Especially the Advent Calendar considering the only thing I care about personally is the minifigures. But let's get into this video. Starting with this poly bag and it's a pretty cool poly bag because you get the Ravenclaw Quidditch torso which is very useful because this is only a five dollar ish poly bag and to be able to get that torso um you know relatively cheap um and it's now a lot more accessible that's a good thing because I remember when this was exclusive to the 2020 Diagon Alley set and that was a 400 plus dollar set and that's not attainable whatsoever so the fact we get this now in a poly bag is great um, we also get the Cedric Diggory um, Quidditch Torso in a book, which also costs roughly five, six, seven dollars. So, again, these are good things, good moves from Lego. And the build actually looks similar to a mock I made not so long ago. I'll put an image of what that mock looks like on screen now, but I thought that was pretty funny. Next, we have the uh, Hogwarts banners. Now, these are pretty good. Um, I think they're better than the Hogwarts Moments books, but I wasn't that much of a fan of those. Obviously, it's very similar. We've got the same sort of price point and also the same amount of minifigures in this. However, you can hang this up on the wall because it, it comes with a bit which you can obviously, you know, wall mount. Um, and also, this has holographic elements, which I think is a really cool idea. It's got a piece of card at the back and they're basically holograms. Um, we had some similar functions on some classic like a Harry Potter sets, like the final challenge, the, um, we had a holographic sticker, and I think it's a nod to those older sets, but I really like the Ravenclaw and the Slytherin one of these. To be fair, I do like the Hufflepuff one. The Gryffindor one's pretty meh, I'm gonna put that in C. Uh, I think, I just think the color schemes of Ravenclaw and Slytherin are probably a slightly better for Hufflepuff and Gryffindor, but they're all pretty good. On Friday the 18th of August, I'm going to be doing nine Lego Harry Potter giveaways. Yes, nine, including the Battle of Hogwarts set and this super rare Grand Staircase gift with purchase set on my next Whatnot live stream. And you can participate in the giveaways from anywhere in the world completely free of charge and you don't even have to pay for the postage either. I'm also going to be auctioning off over 200 Lego Harry Potter minifigures, including the super rare Bricktober pack figures the ultra rare gift of purchase Ollivander figure and also all four Hogwarts Founders minifigures. I'm also going to be auctioning off eight classic Lego Harry Potter sets including this extremely expensive 2004 motorized Hogwarts castle. This minifigure alone is worth over $100. So make sure to sign up using my special link which instantly gives you £10 or $15 free credit for you to use in my live streams to bag yourself some free Lego Harry Potter minifigures. It's a no-brainer. Just don't forget to bookmark my stream so you don't miss it, which again will be happening on Friday the 18th of August at 8pm BST. Um, next we have the Room of Requirement set. Mm. The problem with this set is I think the build is very vast. It's a large build for the price point, right? The price of this is $50 or £45 and we get some really cool minifigures and the build is very big and it's modular so you can display it in different ways. However, I think the Fire Snake is pretty disappointing. I would have preferred this to be an $80 set and we actually get a $30 Fire Snake build, like an actual build that we put together, not just some sort of, like whatever it is at the moment, just some sort of lumps of molded pieces, which I guess make a snake when you put it together, which, yeah, I'm not really too much of a fan of the Fire Snake. Um, I also think the interior is pretty bare. Um, like, look, I don't think it's an A tier set. I'm gonna put it in B tier, but at the top of B tier. It's certainly better than the um, Hogwarts banners, but I don't think it's an A tier set, personally. What is an A tier set, without a doubt, is this. And it's a complete surprise, because when I heard about this set, I was pretty, you know, I wasn't really excited about it. I didn't really think I'd be too interested in it. But when it came out, I fell in love with it instantly. I just think it looks fantastic. Um, I also love the fact that you can do two different forms of the Patronus. You can do obviously the Stag or you can do the Wolf of Lupin. However, I think it would have been really cool if we got more alternative builds than just two. It would have been cool if we got 
Dumbledore's Fox um, or the Phoenix um, Patronus, or maybe we've got Hermione's Badger or Otter. Is it a, or is it an Otter or a Badger that Hermione's Patronus is? I can't quite remember. Whatever it is, I think it would have been really cool um, if we've got more forms than just two, because I don't think the Wolf looks too great, so I think everyone just builds a stag, but I think a Phoenix Patronus would be pretty impressive. Okay. Next, the Battle of Hogwarts. This goes in Esther, I think. Just about Esther. It's definitely not the best set on this list, but I think the minifigures are really great. I think Bellatrix the dual modded arms is fantastic in this. The fact we didn't get dress printing on Bellatrix again, by the way, is disappointing. But I think the build is really clever, how it's one of the only high poly sets where you can build two different scenes in one sort of set. There's a lot of modular Harry Potter sets um, with these Hogwarts expansions, but this is the first Hogwarts expansion where you can literally build two different parts of the castle. You can build the bridge or you can build the courtyard. And um, I love the Voldemort figure in this with his sand green robes to represent sort of dust all over them. I love the Neville minifigure. I love the wand spell effects. And um, I think it's really good. I think it's a really nice size as well. Obviously the interior is very lacklustre to say the least, or I mean, Non-existent will probably be more accurate <laughs> than like Luster, but you can't have everything. And I think this is a really impressive set for the $70, $80 price point that it is. What isn't an impressive set in my opinion is this Quidditch book thing. Um, we obviously got a very similar set in 2022 with the Hogwarts trunk where we got a lot of accessories and minifigure parts and elements inside of it. And this is basically exactly the same thing, but a Quidditch version. I'm just not about it. I think if you're wanting to make a big Quidditch creation and you need a load of players, then maybe buying this would be beneficial. But I just don't even see that because of the high price. This is a $70, $80 set, which is absolutely ridiculous. I think a sort of Quidditch battle pack should have been aimed at $30, $40, not $70, $80. And it would be just cheaper to buy the minifigures individually and even the, the parts you want from this set on Bricklink and save yourself the whole trunk build because I don't think the chest of a trunk is really the um, the good thing about this set. It's the minifigures. And if you want the minifigures, which is completely understandable, just buy them on Bricklink for like $14 combined. And don't spend $70 on this set. Um, Gringotts. Gringotts is definitely Esther. I absolutely love this set. It goes at the top of Esther. Um, it's not perfect. I think, for example, the top floor of the Gringotts Bank is very lacklustre. Um, I think the vaults are disappointing, generally speaking, because they're only like one stood deep. It would have been really cool if they made room to have an actual three-dimensional vault, which you can pose minifigures inside of. There is a space at the back, however, so I'm hoping there's going to be a gift of purchase to make um, the vault where the Philosopher's Stone was because, because that's the only vault that was shown in the films that's actually missing because we get Harry's vault, we get Bellatrix's vault, but we don't get um, the vault which was basically empty apart from the Philosopher's Stone. Um, and I think having that vault as a gift of purchase attached to the back of it, which is three dimensional, would make the set a lot better. Um, but. I mean, I'm nitpicking, aren't I? This set is just remarkable. It's a set I've been waiting for for a long time, as you guys know. I'm sure you guys have been waiting for this set as well. Um, I think the dragon's cool. I think the the fact that you can detach the different sections, if you've already got the 2020 Diagon Alley set, you can pose your big Gringotts bank with that set if you want to and display the underground section on its own. And I think it looks good on its own. Um, or if you don't have that set, you can display it all together and it looks even more impressive. I'm just a big fan of how this set was uh, designed. Now the advent calendar, I actually quite like the advent calendar compared to some other years. I think the minifigures we get of Harry, Neville, Ron and Hermione and Draco, I believe the minifigures are, in their sort of Hogsmeade um, attire, I think is really good. Um, I've got a Hogsmeade Village mock, as you guys probably know, I'll leave an annotation on screen now to watch that, but um, getting these minifigures to fill out that sort of mock is going to be really beneficial for me, so I can't wait to get my hands on this set, but not for the builds, um, just to get the minifigures open and put them in my mock and probably leave the builds in the box for a long, long time, unfortunately, or just you know use the parts of those builds in my part collection. I'm just not too interested in the builds themselves. It's just the minifigures is my main 
interest in these advent calendars and it always has been that's just, that's just me personally i know a lot of people just sort of you know wait until december and then open the you know the doors day by day that's fine that's how it's intended to be used but i don't have the patience for that um i think this set the micro scale hogwarts grounds is just as good as the green guts i mean it's really really cool the fact you can also whirl it round at the back and see all the underground different sections um, is really cool as well. It's very similar to the 2018 Hogwarts Castle. However, this Hogwarts is clearly a lot more complete. And I think this is actually the entire castle. I don't know if we get the Owlery. Um, I can't quite remember and I can't see it on this image. We might be missing the Owlery, but if we are, that's the only thing that's missing. Um, but this is really, really cool. I don't really have any criticism about this set. Maybe the price point is a bit expensive, but I think you get your money's worth. Um, I'll definitely be picking up September 1st, no doubt, along with the Gringotts set. It's going to be a very, very expensive day because there's the Concord set I really want. There's obviously the Star Wars Ahsoka sets I really want, like the T6 Shuttle and the Ghost. There's Gringotts. There's obviously this. There's a lot of sets to buy. <laughs> I just don't know which sets to buy and which sets to hold off because uh, there's an April day mid-September, which we get 15% off and I might hold some of those purchases off until then, but we'll see what happens. Um, now we have the second task set. I'm gonna put this set in A tier, just about, it could easily go in B tier, and that's because it's a very imperfect set. I think it's a good set, and I'm glad they remade it because it's one of my favorite scenes. However, there's an unmistakably amount of minifigures that's missing. Um, They've clearly made the decision to make this a very cheap set and only do like half the minifigures they could have made here. I mean, we could have got Bodycraft Senior for the first time ever. We could have got, obviously, you know, Cedric Diggory, Fleur in their second task attire, which we haven't gotten before. We could have got Cho Chang, we could have got Gabrielle, which are all very, very relevant and important to the scene. I also don't like the fact um, for Crumb and Harry's legs, they've just gone with plain red and plain black, which makes no sense because they're wearing shorts, so why don't we have dual molded legs? Beats me. Um, I do like the fact we get a Grindelow and also a Mer person, but the fact you only get one Grindelow and one Mer person, again, is a little bit disappointing. I just think this set above them all should have been a $100, $120 set. It should have been, you know, all out. We got a massive arch and we got three spectator towers, which is obviously accurate to the Goblet of Fire movie, where in this set we only get one of them. I just think this should have been a lot bigger and better. I've obviously made a mock video where I made that set a lot bigger and better, which I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to watch that. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. But that's just my opinions on this set, why it isn't perfect. It goes in eighty. Now the final set on this list, we have Dobby. Now, I don't know why the Professors of Hogwarts Brickhead set is here because um, this set didn't come out in 2023, it came out in 2022, so I don't know why this is here, but we'll ignore that. Dobby the House Elf. <clears throat> now, a very controversial set because it looks dorky, but I really like it. I think for the price, which is $30 or £25 in the UK, you're getting a lot of value for your money. I think it's a pretty cool Dobby. I think the legs and the feet are a bit wonky, but I think the head is great. I think the head works really well. I don't really understand the criticism of this set because I think it works fantastic. I also love the fact we get the um, the cake as well, and obviously Tom Riddle's sort of diary with the sock inside. I think that's a really good touch. And we get a nice base with uh, Dobby written on it. I think it's really, really cool. I'm going to put it... Ooh, I don't know about A tier. I'll put it B tier, because I understand the criticism. It's a bit weird, but this is not a new thing from Lego Harry Potter to make these animal sets. We got, um, obviously, the Hungarian Horntail in 2022. In 2021, we got the 20th anniversary Forks to Phoenix set, and in 2020, we got the Hedwig set. So this is just an extension of those animals for the same sort of price between sort of 30 to $50. And hopefully next year we get Grip Hook, not Grip Hook. What am I talking about? Yeah, let's not get Grip Hook. Hopefully next year we get Buckbeak, the Hippogriff. Yes, not Grip Hook. Anyway, 
that was this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll leave a link to make this tier list in the description down below. Let me know down in the comment section below where you guys agree or disagree with me on this tier list. I really want to get a conversation going on this because I think it's a really interesting topic because there's a lot of sets that are obviously quite controversial, like the Dobby set. I think the sets which, you know, like the Expected Patronum set, I'm really interested to where you guys place it because I actually really rate it highly. And obviously, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed with my placement of the second task set not being an S tier, but I have my reasons, guys. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another Lego Harry Potter video. I'll see you there.